Hello friends, my dear students and uh, the members of the fraternity of physiology and medicine. Hope you all are staying safe, staying healthy, uh, must have got vaccinated or due for vaccination. Uh, let's stand united with our uh, brethren who are uh, in the forefront of this battle, the healthcare workers. Uh, let's uh, take this particular video and it's an interesting one. It talks about the pacemakers in the body and pacemaker cells. What are special features of the pacemaker cells? Uh, now, why did the idea come to my mind is because the other day, uh, we were discussing something about the artificial pacing of the heart. So, we will talk about it in some other video. We will discuss the artificial pacing or artificial pacemakers versus the natural pacemakers. But then, I started thinking as to what, how many are the pacemakers in our body and how do they function as pacemakers. So, basically, which tissues or organ systems would need pacemaker? Those organ systems which have a very, very regular function. The function, the functioning that happens at a very regular frequency. Such organ systems will need pacemakers. So, Basically, four definitive pacemakers have been found in the body in the context of four major organ systems. So, obviously, heart is one of them because you know heart is uh, beating forever, beat after beat after beat. It would need pacemaker and in fact, in the case of heart, there can be multiple pacemakers. I mean, if, if the one pacemaker fails, then the other part in the heart can take over as pacemaker. How does that happen? We will see that later. Uh, uh, let, we will see that in some other video, of course. It will need an entire video. Right, so heart. Then we have breathing, which goes on regularly and therefore uh, breathing also has the pacemaker. Then digestive tract has pacemaker. Pacemaker cell and the pacemaker complexes have been found in the digestive system. The interstitial cell of Cajal is the pacemaker cell in the digestive tract. We will talk about it. And in the ureter, so in the excretory system, which also has to perform a very, very regular uh, function, has to have some intrinsic rhythmic activity controlled by the pacemaker. So, in the pelvi-ureteric junction, in the uppermost part of the ureter, let's say, there is a pacemaker complex or the pacemaker cell located in that region, which is responsible for the ureteric peristalsis. So, four organ systems have pacemakers or pacemaker cells. Let's now see uh, what those cells are called and what are their functions? Why, why at all those pacemakers are needed there? Right, first of all, what is a pacemaker? Generally, in a general sense. Uh, if we go by the language, it's the one that decides the pace. Pace of what? Pace of that regular function will be determined by the pacemaker. So, any pacemaker in the body has to have the property of autorhythmicity. Autorhythmicity, autorhythmic. So, auto means self-excitation. That those cells have the ability uh, to excite all by themselves. In the absence of any other external stimulus, those cells can excite by themselves. And that's the property shown by pacemaker cells in the various organ systems that we will see. And not only self-excitation, mind you, self-excitation in a 
rhythmic fashion see the word auto rhythmicity had two parts auto and rhythmicity so auto means self excitation that those cells can by themselves they can reach the threshold and they can excite by themselves and that excitation can be sent down into the organ system so that the other parts also get excited because of the impulse coming from this pacemaker cell but that does not happen once or twice or thrice it happens regularly uh, in the case of heart beat after beat after beat after beat forever in the case of respiratory system uh impulse after impulse after impulse generated in the medulla by the pacemaker which is called as pre bodzinger complex of neurons so not only self excitation but self excitation that occurs regularly forever that's the property of autorhythmicity shown by these pacemakers so let's try to understand how these pacemakers behave let's start with the heart the sa nodal cells well as i mentioned i am taking natural pacemaker the sa node but if this pace i mean what is so special about the heart is that if the one pacemaker stops uh, or fails then the next part like av node for instance can very well become the pacemaker so that the heart can continue to beat it's the most vital organ and therefore that was a necessity if the av node fails some other part can take over and become the pacemaker only thing is that the pace the pace of beating of the heart will be different with different pacemakers but otherwise please understand a pacemaker is the one that determines the pace of excitation pace of the activity in that organ right ah uh, so sa nodal cells the pacemaker cells they have been described uh, the cells in the pacemaker cells in the sa node have been described as the p cell the pacemaker cells and what is so special they are modified muscle cells they are modified muscle cells so modification is that they don't have the contractile machinery obviously they don't need that contractile machinery contractile machinery is required in the myocardium in the cardiac muscle but the sa nodal cells as a part of conducting system don't need that and therefore there is no actin mass and there is no contractile machinery they only retain the excitability uh, part excitability feature of the muscle so modified cardiac muscle cells they are excitable they are autorhythmic but they don't have the contractile machinery and uh, there are a few things which are special about these pacemaker cells in the heart they show all sorts of cation channels these pacemaker cells and that's very unique one must note that all sorts of cation channels are found in the pacemaker cells in the sa nodal cells there are potassium channels there are sodium channels and those sodium channels are special they are funny channels sodium funny channels they generate what is called as sodium funny current and then there are calcium t channels t stands for transient and calcium l channels l stands for long lasting so all sorts of cation channels are found in the sa nodal cells and that's another unique feature of the pacemaker or sa nodal cells so how it happens how the sa node is the pacemaker and how those cells behave is that let's say action potential in the uh, sa nodal cells it reaches threshold and depolarization completed the repolarization is because of the potassium exit potassium leaving the sa nodal cell at the end of it the potassium exit will stop and the potassium which was going out it can't go out because of a reversed electrical gradient will now just start coming near the membrane and will start accumulating inside the membrane so that means the repolarization will stop and the membrane will begin to depolarize again by itself automatically spontaneously next depolarization already started by whom 
by the potassium that is now coming near the membrane on the inside. But then it has to be sustained and that sustenance of the pacemaker potential comes from another channel which is called as sodium funny channel. So, the channel name is HCN uh, or the category of sodium channel is HCN, hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide gated, that is HCN and why it is called funny? Because of two reasons, one is uh, when, when it was found, this channel was found in the heart, the research workers found two things, one is more the hyperpolarization of the membrane, more was the channel getting activated. Now that is unusual for sodium channel. And second is this channel was found to be equally permeable to both sodium and potassium. That was also the funny part. So this was termed initially, so let us say about 20 years ago, this channel was found, it was named as sodium funny channel. And the current was called as sodium funny current. So this sodium funny current into the SA nodal cells will sustain that depolarization and finally reaching of threshold is because of the calcium T channels, calcium enters through the calcium T channels, T stands for transient, so depolarization has reached threshold and then depolarization is completed by the calcium influx through calcium L channels, L stands for long lasting. So, you see all sorts of cationic currents have been generated and they are responsible for the depolarization of the SA nodal cells. That is very unique that one cell uh, is being depolarized by multiple types of currents. But what you should note is that calcium is the major depolarizing current in the SA nodal cells or the pacemaker cells and uh, this potential which reaches threshold after every repolarization, it again reaches threshold, this potential has been described as prepotential or pacemaker potential. So this is the property, but why is SA node pacemaker? Because of two reasons, one at the end of every repolarization, it again spontaneously reaches threshold by itself. It does not need an external agency to send signal or to generate the impulse. It can do it all by itself, that is one and it has got a very, very rapid recovery rate. It, it has got a fastest repolarization in, in the case of heart. Look, many parts in the heart will show this spontaneous reaching of threshold. So, they could be pacemaker, but no, SA node recovers fastest. So, before any other part could recover, SA node recovers means repolarizes and generates the next prepotential and generates the next impulse. So, no other part gets the chance to generate their own, uh, uh, own impulse. Otherwise, as I mentioned, any part could be pacemaker. If one fails, the other can take over. So, that is special about the heart pacemaker. We are also comparing the pacemakers in different regions. So, this, was, this is very unique, special about the pacemaker in the heart. Next, pacemaker for our breathing. The pre-Bodzinger complex in the medulla, in the upper medulla. Look, basically, breathing also uh, goes on spontaneously, automatically. So, naturally, there should be some mechanism by which the signals are generated automatically, spontaneously. And it happens uh, in this manner. Let us say spinal cord continuing upward as medulla. So, in the upper medulla, we have two groups of cells, the dorsal respiratory group and the ventral respiratory group. The rhythm for spontaneous inspiration, you know in a normal quiet breathing, the pacemaker will be required only for inspiration. Where that inspiration stops, the expiration occurs by passive recoil process. So, that inspiratory ramp signal is generated by the neurons in the DRG, dorsal respiratory group. Take this as a diagrammatic uh, representation. 
So neurons of DRG, their axons are coming down on the spinal cord. From the spinal cord, the next neuron reaches the thoracic cage. The muscles of the thoracic cage will contract and the expansion will begin, chest expansion and the inspiration will happen automatically. Now what happens is, there are uh, stretch receptors in the thoracic cage. So as the inspiration proceeds, these stretch receptors are going to be distorted and they send feedback signals via vagus, vagal afferents. And when that feedback signal becomes strong enough, the inspiratory ramp signal generated by these DRG neurons, it will stop abruptly. So the expansion also will stop abruptly and then the expiration occurs by passive recoil process. Where is the mention of pacemaker in this? All right, the pacemaker is actually located and this has not been confirmed in humans but it's confirmed in the lower animals that the pacemaker is actually in the upper medulla in the nearby region. There is a complex of cells called as pre-Bodzinger complex. So pre-Bodzinger complex is a group of neurons and the neurons of the DRG and VRG, they synapse with the pre-Bodzinger complex. So what is understood so far is that Inspiratory ramp signal is generated by the dorsal respiratory group of neurons, but their pace is determined by the neurons in the pre-Bodzinger complex in the upper medulla. So all this is in the upper medulla, the pacemaker pre-Bodzinger complex and the DRG. So uh, it's a it's a dual or it's a, it's a couple in a way that the DRG is going to generate that signal, but its pace will be determined by the pre-Bodzinger complex of neurons, which is the real pacemaker in this case. Right, and as I mentioned, uh, how that signal is generated and how that signal is curtailed is a story in itself, is a feedback uh, loop in itself. Right, so that is about the respiratory center. Uh, or the respiratory pacemaker. Next is pacemaker in the digestive tract. It's called as interstitial cell of Kahal. Yes, the pronunciation, although it's written like this, but pronunciation is Kahal. It's named after Spanish pathologist Santiago Ramon by Kahal. So, this is an interstitial cell and it's found in the digestive tract. It's a stellate shaped cell found in the uh, digestive tract. It synapses with the neurons of the ANS and it synapses with the smooth muscle lining the digestive tract. So let's just uh, show it uh, diagrammatically. Let's say a stellate shaped cell, the interstitial cell of Cahal. It synapses with the smooth muscle cell lining the digestive tract and on the other hand it also synapses with the neurons of the ANS. So it takes the signal from the ANS, it integrates it and uh, accordingly generates the electrical activity in the smooth muscle cells. That electrical activity in the smooth muscle cells would then be called as basal electrical rhythm. So in every part of the digestive tract, there is some basal electrical rhythm. For example, those waves are described as slow waves and at the top of the slow wave, there are spikes and this can happen uh, or rather multiple spikes can be seen at the top of the slow waves. This activity occurs with a certain frequency which has been described as basal electrical rhythm. For instance, in the stomach, it's, it occurs at 3 to 4 times per minute. Highest is seen in the duodenum, 12 uh, per minute and then it goes on decreasing as you go down the small intestine. But this activity 
or rather its space and frequency is said to be generated by the interstitial cell of Kahal. The thing that, that you should remember is that it's the interstitial cell, this uh, interstitial cell of Kahal and uh, it synapses with, with the smooth muscle cell in the digestive tract and it's, take, it's synapsing also with the neurons of the autonomic nervous system. So that was about uh, another pacemaker cell. Well, let me just add here, there is also pacemaker complex in the stomach. In the mid portion of the body of the stomach, there is a pacemaker complex. So, interstitial cell of Kahal serves as an electrical pacemaker and generates spontaneous electrical slow waves in the digestive tract. We have already seen this that there is a requirement of spontaneity when we say a particular cell or part as pacemaker. So, spontaneous electrical slow waves are generated in the digestive tract by this cell and then as a result of that there would be the mechanical activity and peristalsis and so on and so forth in the digestive tract. So, electrical activity would lead to segmentation contractions and peristalsis. Finally, we will also see the fourth tissue where there is pacemaker, fourth organ system that is ureter, I mean excretory system, um, ureteral pacemaker. Now, ureter can be made to peristals by mechanical stimulation anywhere along its course. So, that is the first point. If there is a mechanical stimulation, a ureter can be made to peristals anywhere, it can originate from anywhere if there is a mechanical stimulation. So, let that be clear. But, pacemaker is at the uppermost part of the ureter or pelvic calatial junction near that region, there is a pacemaker complex of the ureter and it would require an electrical stimulation. The electrical uh, excitation rather would cause pacemaker activity in that ureteral pacemaker. So, uh, let us see with the diagram. At the very topmost region, somewhere in this part, there would be ureteral pacemaker. Otherwise, the peristalsis, look, we are looking at the peristalsis. Once the urine has been generated by the peristalsis of the ureter, it should flow down into the bladder. So, that is why we need a pacemaker over here. But the point that I mentioned was, if there is a mechanical stimulation, it can lead to peristaltic activity. So, that mechanical stimulation anywhere along the ureteral course can result in the peristalsis, peristaltic activity of the ureter. But so far as the pacemaker is concerned, yes, it is in the uppermost part um, where you find this pacemaker and electrical auto excitation. Well, again the same property, self-excitation, autorhythmicity, electrical excitation by itself in rhythmic fashion, that is shown by the ureteral pacemaker as well. So, cells in the renal pelvis and ureter spontaneously generate and propagate this electrical activity, resulting in coordinated ureteric peristalsis and propels urine from the kidney into the bladder. What type of cell is this? Or what type of channel does it have? HCN3 type, type 3. Again, where did we uh, see this particular channel? In the SA node, HCN type 1, hyperpolarization activated, cyclic nucleotide gated, it is a sodium channel. So, this has been found recently in the membrane of the pacemaker cells. So, this is very similar to the SA node. And what type of cell is present in the ureteral pacemaker? That debate is still going on. It is not a uh, completely settled issue. So, the debate is between its whether it is atypical smooth muscle cell. Look, in the case of heart, SA nodal cell, we have seen an atypical cardiac muscle cell. 
here we are talking of atypical smooth muscle cell and an ICC like cell. ICC interstitial cell of Cahal. So, um, the debate is going on whether it is this type of cell or that type. That issue is not settled yet. The ICC like cells are also called as Cahal like cells. So, it is CLC Cahal like cells. These ICC like cells are responsible for the autorhythmicity. So, again there has to be autorhythmicity for it to be called as pacemaker. And this autorhythmicity that generates peristaltic waves at certain frequency. You get the point whether it is heart, it is respiration, it is digestive tract or even here. All these four organ systems, they have to have a certain regular activity. What is the frequency? Frequency of the ureteral peristalsis is 3 to 4 waves per minute. So, to produce these 3 to 4 waves per minute, peristaltic waves, uh, we need a pacemaker or a pacemaker complex which has that kahal like cell. So, these are certain pacemakers. Four major organ systems have uh, pacemakers. And we have, of course, we have CNS and endocrine system, which is the re, which are the regulatory systems. So they are going to regulate these uh, organ systems. And we have skeletal uh, musculoskeletal system that's uh, going to function on a very voluntary and periodic basis. It would not require a pacemaker. These four did require; they do require the pacemaker. And in summary, these are the locations of the pacemaker. These are the cells, their channels and their characteristics. So, that was a very short topic about the pacemakers present in the body. Thank you.